Should your business name match your domain name? Let's get to it. What's up everybody, my name is David. Welcome back to the channel. So in short, obviously your business name should match your domain name when possible. But I think this question arises primarily because people have a business name and they just can't get the exact match domain name that they want. And so what do you do in that instance? You have a few different options. First option is just consider registering a different domain extension. For example, the .co extension exists primarily for this reason. That's why it costs a little bit more as a way to discourage squatters from gobbling up all the .co's. Uh, what a squatter is is someone whose business primarily revolves around registering domain names and maintaining a large portfolio of domain names. Like we're talking like hundreds, even thousands of different domain names, and then reselling those domain names at a higher market value as a way to turn a profit. And so that's unfortunate for people who like just want to build a website. Like, hey, I got Cooper's Accounting. That's my business in Connecticut, and I want to register register coopersaccounting.com. It's like, oh my God, I can't register that. Yeah, no, because a squatter took it. And so that's why you want to be open to using an alternative domain extension. Other times, you may just want to reach out to the actual like domain name squatter and see like how much do they want for their domain name. Okay, obviously don't tell them that like, hey, I have own I have my business Cooper's Accounting. I noticed that you have a Cooper's. Like, don't say that because then they know that, okay, I got you. Like you, I have a domain name that you think is very valuable that you really want. I'm gonna jack up the prices and get as much as I can out of you. So make sure to keep things quiet. But also you also be open to having other devices in the domain name. So for example, like if you're in, if you're located in Connecticut, cause I'm a guy who's from Connecticut, you could have coopersaccountingct.com. And so that would help your website be a little bit more targeted for search terms related to Connecticut. And that would help brand the site and you can still get your Cooper's accounting or you could use a hyphen like Cooper's hyphen accounting, et cetera. So you have a lot of different options about things you can do. You could also just abbreviate as best you can. Uh, something that comes to mind is like entrepreneursonfire.com has been rebranded as eofire.com. So which one is better? <laughs> like eofire.com, eofire dot com. It's way better than entrepreneursonfire.com. That's way too long. And it, they, the, the two domains still match. They still have that specific branding because you're not going to visit like uh, eofire.com and then the website's called Entrepreneurs on Fire and go be, that makes no sense. No, you're going to be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And that looks like a nice domain name. You just have to be careful because oftentimes when I've reviewed websites, I've reviewed websites where the domain name is one thing, and then the brand is like something else and it's like they don't match. It's like, that is weird. Don't go with something like uh, best accounting agency in the world.com. Then the, 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 the brand on the website is Cooper's Accounting. It's like, that makes no sense. Okay. So you always want to make sure that it matches somewhat. It doesn't have to be an exact match. <laughs> but don't make it something like wildly different so it doesn't make any sense. And then last, broadly speaking, just make sure you're building a brand. And so if you're a brick and mortar business, okay, I understand like you're already established, et cetera, maybe you don't have that flexibility, but for everyone else, always have flexibility with being open to changing your domain name or brand name or business name when possible. I know this is like a not ideal advice, but it's true. You, you Really, you wanna take a look at, you, you wanna Google your brand and see what's ranking before you even get started. Uh, for example, like if you want to call, if you want to start a brand and call it Juicebox Creative, that's a terrible idea. Why? Well, just do a quick Google search for Juicebox Creative. What will you find? You're gonna find juiceboxcreative.com, .net, .co.au. Then you're gonna find all the social media profiles are already taken by different companies and different people. And so it's like a, a, a name that's unique and creative and, and nice, but then it's like everybody's going after it and everybody's like gobbling that up on different social media platforms and there's a lot of confusion within that domain name. And one particular agency located in Australia kind of dominates for that phrase. And so you could, while you could start, like you could register juiceboxgrave.com because I used to own that domain name actually, but you're never going to be indexed for Google and other, so, and other platforms for that domain name because it's just owned by this other company that's very, very popular in uh, Australia. So when people Google Juicebox Crave, they're going to find the Australian company before they ever find the .com. And they also own all the social media platforms. And so then you end up having like people have like juiceboxcrave.net and et cetera. And it's just a like an echo of this more popular website. It's, they look, they appear to be like a copycat because you also don't want to run into any copyright infringement issues. Like, like Juicebox Creative, that, that's a big, massive web design firm in Australia. So if you were to register like juiceboxcreative.com, start doing website website design in America, that's kind of like you're kind of infringing on another company and so that you could run into potential legal issues. Not saying you will, 
because that whole thing is kind of confusing and, and legal, cost, costly and just nobody wants to deal with that. But that's just something to be aware of. My whole point is like, just make sure that you can own your brand across multiple platforms and that you're not competing with anyone and you're building something unique, uh, etc. Anyways, I'll leave it there. That is it for this video. My name is David, website creativepro.com. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, hit that like button, and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.